What's going on everybody? Just have another video here I want to react to. Just Robert Kennedy. Apparently he's got an, another announcement. He might be actually moving from an independent to a libertarian. So let's have a look at this video. I haven't seen it yet. In mid-January, RFK Jr. roused his supporters in Raleigh. He was confident he would get the signatures required to get on North Carolina's fall ballot as an independent for president. However, I sat down with Kennedy just before his speech, and there was confusion as to just how many signatures he actually needs. In order for you to get on the fall ballot in North Carolina as an independent presidential candidate, you need to get roughly 83,000-plus signatures um, in order to do so, correct? I, I'm not asking you to. Like, we can this is a quiz. No, 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 no. I'm I not going to ask you to confirm that. I, I've confirmed uh, the Board of Elections. Is it? Yeah. You, I didn't know that's it's, it's one and a half percent. 13,757. So that's as a party. I don't. And several hours later, his campaign acknowledged the total was just more than eighty-three thousand and not thirteen thousand. I know you're trying to get over. That's something his staff, his campaign staff, should have really known. That's not a great look. It look, makes him look a little bit confused. I'm not going to hold that too much against him, but that that's kind of a weird thing to have happen. Anyway, let's continue. Eighty thousand signatures on your to, to be on the ballot. How do you feel about that? Do you think you'll make the house? Yeah, we're gonna, we we will get all our signatures and then some. But that may give us a signal as to why running as a libertarian candidate, which is an established party, might be easier than getting all the signatures needed in each state. This comes as a new Morning Consult Bloomberg poll has Trump ahead of Biden in the swing states, including North Carolina, by 13 points. Kennedy gets nine percent of the vote. People typically tend to go to their political corners by the time of Labor Day in September and the general campaign starting. But these are worrisome signs if the president is this far behind how much effort is going to be needed in some of these states. Political scientist Michael Pitzer says Democrats only have to look at the Bush-Gore race to be nervous. But if Ralph Nader, a third-party candidate then, had not been on the Florida ballot and his votes would have typically gone to Al Gore, we would not have had the 2000 uh, presidential issue uh, that Florida presented. But Kennedy told me he doesn't see himself as a spoiler. I intend to win the election. I intend to take votes away from President Trump and President Biden. But also what we're seeing is that a lot of my voters are people who would not have otherwise voted. Yet Bitzer says it's the basic rules of American politics. You don't necessarily win a majority. You have to win a plurality. You have to win one more vote than the person who comes in second. And then you get all of the electoral votes oftentimes in the states. And that just inherently sets up a two-party system and also designs third parties to indeed be the spoilers that I talked about. So to remind folks at home, you know, maybe scratch your head, where did Russ come up with this 83,000 yeah, yeah. State Board of Elections? Okay, so I think we got the gist of the video there. I just want to address the last part of that where that gentleman was talking about how he he said that the, the third party candidate kind of acts as a spoiler. Well, that's only because third party candidates usually aren't popular. They showed a poll there at Robert Kennedy being at around 9% and then Trump being ahead by 13 points in swing states. I've seen otherwise. I've seen Robert Kennedy pull between 15 and 20 percent and then Trump having the lead around 8 percent. So I'm not sure how accurate that poll is. And not to mention, even if it is accurate, you got to take polls with a grain of salt. Unless you're seeing, you know, what we're seeing here in Canada, which is some huge discrepancy. Then, you know, you probably trust the polls a little bit more, at least in terms of who the winner is going to be. But the reason that a third party candidate in the States acts as a spoiler is because, first of all, out of the people who do vote, which is only half of the eligible American voters, a lot of them still do believe in the Democrat and Republican system. The ones who don't, the ones who don't like the uniparty or the two-party system, they are way more likely to go and vote for Robert Kennedy Jr., even if they didn't vote before, Robert Kennedy Jr. is the type of guy to get people off their asses and to the voting ballots, or to the voting polls, rather. Now, if he can do that, 
say he can get 20, 30 million people, it's a lot. But if he can do that and then take votes away from Trump and Biden, he could absolutely win some electoral votes. Enough to win the election? That's a whole other question. Now, moving on to the part where he's talking about potentially moving to a libertarian party. You know, you can you can argue that that's a, a much better option for him. You know, we can you can tell that you know just by the fact that the Libertarian Party already has back uh, ballot access in most states, if not all. That's a huge hurdle for Robert F. Kennedy because you know cha- states are going to change rules; they're going to make it harder than it has to be. Well, this way, if if he wins the nomination for the Libertarian Party, he's already in there. So I think that's a really good idea for him. Now, I do know that some libertarians watch this channel and they seem pretty iffy on him overall. So I don't know if they trust him yet. And to be fair, I do think it takes a lot for libertarians to trust a politician, rightfully so. I I lean towards that libertarian middle of of the road, less government, the better populism kind of, that's my kind of ideology with politics. It is harder for people like us to trust politicians. If you watched my videos before on Pierre Poiliev or Justin Trudeau, even though I like Pierre Poiliev, I still don't fully trust him. I trust Robert Kennedy more, 100%, no, but close. It's the most I've ever trusted a politician. Now, I do believe I actually cut this a little bit short, so I'm gonna watch the rest of the video because RFK Jr. didn't touch on the libertarian movement or the, moving to the Libertarian Party. It was just kind of asked uh, the question. So let's see if he talks about this. It's one and a half percent of the total turnout, total voter turnout in the last statewide election. That's how we get to that number. That's by state statute. That's state right. law. So does this mean he will be the Libertarian nominee? Not necessarily. The Libertarian Party will have, you know, a uh, just like the, the RNC and the DNC, exactly. they'll have their big convention, right? And they, it's up to them to nominate the, uh, the, the, who is going to be the nominee or, or vote for who will be the nominee. So no guarantees. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we got a lot to watch in the months sure ahead, folks. Okay, yeah, so Robert Kennedy Jr. didn't have too much to say, but I have seen other videos where he's you know said that he is definitely thinking about it. He is, seen, he is interested in it. Can he get the nomination? Will the libertarian people accept him? Will people get off the couch and start to vote for him instead of not voting for him at all? Or will they? Or will current voters pick Robert Kennedy Jr. instead of Trump or Biden? I do think people are, especially in the mainstream media, are underestimating the fact that a lot of Americans are really hungry for a third-party option. A lot of those people are a little bit familiar with the Libertarian Party, so that also helps Robert Kennedy Jr. because voting or attaching your name, which is already a very popular name, to a a, not a popular party, but at least a relatively known party, could definitely boost your population a little bit, or your your popularity a little bit. So, I mean, you know, maybe he, he looks into that. I think that's a good move for him. I made a video a few months ago talking about that, and I thought that he should run as a libertarian instead of an independent. So hopefully he considers that. Hopefully the libertarians accept him. Hopefully he can get people off the couch and into the voting polls. We'll have to see. We still got, what, nine months or so until the election. So, you know, it's going to be, a lot's going to happen within those nine months, and I'm definitely very excited to you know, be covering that and whatnot. But let me know in the comments section, what do you think? Do you think Robert Kennedy is better off as a libertarian or as an independent? Thanks again, guys, for watching as always, and I'll be back shortly with another video.